This is the second video in the chemical quantity series, and this one will be on counting by groupings. I'll explain what groupings are very shortly, and we'll continue by counting by weighing. Now, let's assume that you have a small catering company, and two people are coming to see you about catering their anniversary party. You want to impress them by making a frittata, which is an egg-based dish, and each frittata you make requires six eggs. You want to make two different frittatas so that you can show them your culinary skills and expertise, and so you need a total of 12 eggs. So you go to the refrigerator to get your 12 eggs, where you notice that there are no eggs. So you turn to your assistant, and you very calmly ask for the eggs. The assistant sends her assistant scurrying off to the local grocery store to buy some eggs. The eggs get purchased. The junior assistant comes scurrying back, hands the impatient chef, you, this carton, and now you're all smiles. But I'm confused. You asked for 12 of something. They brought you back one of something, and yet you're happy. How can 12 equal one? And you go, oh, be serious. Everybody knows that one dozen equals 12. The dozen is what I call a grouping, a name for a number. Groupings equal a number. You know lots of different types of groupings. For example, a dozen equals 12, a pair equals 2, an octet equals 8, a ream equals 500. Here you have some cards. There are 52 cards here. You also say there's one deck. So one deck is equal to 52, and in this case, it's a deck of cards equals 52 cards. If you count the straws here, you'll find that there are 52 straws. We know that one deck is equal to 52 of something, so we can say we have a deck of straws. Is here, there are two goggles. Well, we know that one pair equals two, so you could have told me you had one pair of goggles. If I asked you to count the calculators, you could have told me there are six calculators, but you may have told me that there were three pair of calculators because three times two is six. It's important to remember that the number is a count, that the number is not a mass, that the number is not a volume, that the number is a count. It becomes something else when you attach the appropriate label to it. Now, going back to basic math, where A equals B, and B equals C, then A equals C, then it should become obvious that if a grouping is a number and a number is a count, then a grouping is a count. So grouping is a count. It's not a mass. It's not a volume. It is simply a count. And the fact that I've repeated it several times in a short period of time means that that is a really important concept. For example, you count all the spheres here, you can say you have a dozen spheres. Well, if you count each of the different things here, you'll find that you have one dozen yellow spheres, one dozen white objects, and one dozen grains of rice. You have the same quantity in each grouping, but as is very obvious, they have different volumes, and take my word for it, they each have different masses. Groupings can also be used as fractions. So if you happen to count all of the yellow spheres here, you can report that you have one and a third dozen spheres. If you count all the spheres here, you could say that you have two and a sixth dozen, or you could have reported half a deck, or 13 pairs. Each of those is equivalent. Now, if you know how much a grouping weighs, you can convert from group to mass, and you do that by multiplying. You can convert from mass to group, you do that with division. So for example, suppose I handed you a pair of dice, and then I told you that the dice weighed 120 grams. I then gave you 12,180 grams of dice. How many pairs of dice do you have? Set it up. Write down what you're being asked, then write down what you know, and since you're going from mass to number, you're going to divide 12,180 grams divided by 120 
grams per pair, notice the grams cancel out, is 101.5 pair of dice. Let's do a similar one. Only this time I tell you that a pair of elephants weighs 11,050 grams. I hand you 1.1215 times 10 to the 6th kilograms, or 1,121,500 kilograms of elephants. How many pairs of elephants do you have? Write down the question, write down what you know, and since you're going from mass to number, you're going to divide. So you take the weight, divide it by the mass per pair. Notice once again the kilograms cancel out, and you get 101.5 pair of elephants. So in the previous two examples, we looked at elephants, we looked at dice. We had 101.5 pair of elephants, 101.5 pair of dice. We have the same number of each of these objects. If the elephants weighed just over a million kilograms, dice weighed just over 12,000 grams, and it's very obvious that these two masses are not equal. And if you put them in the same unit and in scientific notation, You'll notice that the elephants are about 100,000 times more massive than the dice. What about going in the other direction? We'll define a baker's dozen as being 13 things. You get handed some donuts. As a matter of fact, it's a baker's dozen of donuts. You're informed that one baker's dozen of donuts weighs 325 grams. If I were to hand you 13 and a half baker's dozen of donuts, how many grams would you have? Set it up. Only this time, since you're going from number to weight, you're going to multiply. So you're going to take 13.5 baker's dozens and multiply it by the mass per baker's dozen. Now notice that the baker's dozen label cancels out, and you're left with 4,387.5 grams as the mass you are looking for. So let's let you do one, and we'll start by defining one gross as 144 things. We're also going to define that one gross of gold coins weighs 4,478.4 grams. You're handed 1,836 gold coins. What's the mass of all these coins? And here's a hint. You're going to need to do this in two steps. The answer is 5.7100 times 10 to the fourth grams, or 57,100 grams. How do we get that answer? Well, you start by converting the coins to gross by dividing by 144 coins per gross, and you get 12.75 gross. Take the number, multiply it by the mass per gross, notice the gross cancels out, and you get the correct answer. And oh, by the way, this many gold coins would equal $2.2 million. There is another way to do this, and I'd be happy to either show it to you or check to see if you did it correctly. So to review, groupings can substitute for numbers. Dozen is 12, tetrad is 4, gross is 144, so on and so forth. You can convert groupings to numbers and numbers to groupings, provided you know the definition of the grouping. If you know the mass for a grouping, you can convert from group to mass and mass to grouping. If you know the mass for the groupings and the numbers for the groupings, then you can go from mass to group to numbers, notice a two-step process, or you can go from number to group to mass, once again, another two-step process. Why did I just spend all this time reviewing something you already know? Because of the mole. And in chemistry, the mole is not a small furry animal, it's not a skin lesion, and it is not a Mexican sauce, and yes, I am aware that that Mexican sauce is pronounced mole. In chemistry, the mole is a grouping. The mole is this many things, or 602 trillion billion things, and with such a large number, it is way easier to put it into scientific notation. This is an almost inconceivable number. Why do I say that? Well, let's look at all of the molecules of water in a tablespoon of water and compare that to all the stars in the entire universe. The tablespoon of water has approximately one mole of water molecules, or 602 trillion billion molecules. The stars in the universe are one-tenth of a mole. Ten times fewer stars in the universe than molecules in just one tablespoon of water. As I say, this is an almost inconceivable number, but the emphasis is going to be on the almost, because we're going to work with that number no problem. So the next two videos that I would recommend that you watch are not on my YouTube channel. 
simply because I didn't make them, but the links are available in the Section 9 section of Edmodo. So after you look at those two videos, come back, and in the next video that I make, you will see that working with a mole, despite its being a huge number, is actually no more difficult than working with a dozen.